How do you size HVAC equipment for a home? In the US, more than 90% of HVAC equipment is either oversized or improperly installed. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to perform a proper heat load calculation. You're watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, let's get started. Why is a heat load calculation so important? A properly sized HVAC system will have better performance and lead to customer satisfaction. If we put a unit in this home that's undersized, then that undersized unit may have longer run times, it may never heat and cool the space properly, and that will lead to higher energy bills. If we put a system in this home that is oversized, then it may short cycle, it may come on and then back off, it may not run long enough to remove the humidity, and then coming on and back off many times during the day may lead to costly repairs. And that's why in today's video, I am giving you the information you need to perform a proper heat load calculation. Tools and materials I use. Laser measuring tool, tape measure, some paper, a pen, and the Manual J ACA 8th edition. This book right here is for estimating heating and cooling loads for residential structures. So if you are an HVAC contractor or you want to be an HVAC contractor, you need this book. There's some math involved with the load calculation and that's why there's software available. Today I'm showing you an app that I found called LaserCalc Mobile and it guides the user through the process of calculating the heating and the cooling load for your home. Now let me show you how to find the app. We're going to go on to the Google search bar. We're going to type in LaserCalc Mobile. Then we're going to click where it says airmatchpro.com LaserCalc. And then you can see you can download it on the App Store for your iPhone or get it on Google Play for your Android. I've already downloaded, so now I'm going to open it up. Now I'm going to put my login credentials. So I'm going to type in my email and then I'm going to add my password. Now we're going to add our client. Push the plus symbol. We're going to add the name Billy and then Bob. And then you can put the rest of the information in there like email, phone number. Then we're going to click save and then we're going to add our load calc. Once we see where we can add our load calc, that's when we're going to input our address. Now we're going to enter the address where the load calculation will be performed. So we're going to type in 1000 Eva Road, Camden, Tennessee. Then we're going to click the right arrow button. Now we can see we're close to Jackson, Tennessee. And you see at the very bottom it says, we use a database of cities with climate data provided by ACA to estimate the outdoor temperature and humidity. The geographical closest cities are shown first, but the city with the closest climate may, may not be geographically closest. So they're using the conditions here. That way we have a more proper heat load calculation. So once we enter the information for the address, then we're gonna hit the right arrow button again, and then we're gonna be performing our first step. So enter the total square footage for all the living spaces. Do not include the garage or basement unless they are conditioned spaces. So we're gonna be measuring the square footage of this home and we're using this software to perform a block load calculation where we are entering the whole square footage of the home instead of a detailed room by room. You, you have softwares where you can do a detailed room by room or you have softwares where you can do a full block load calculation. And that's what we're doing today. It's easy and it's simple. Now let's go ahead and get our tools and let's measure the square footage. Since this home has two sides that are the same, we're only gonna be measuring the length and the width. Then we're gonna take those two figures and we're gonna multiply those to get the total square footage. Right now, we've got the width and that's 28 feet. We used our tape measure to find the total square footage. The length was 34 feet 
and the width was 28 feet. We take those two figures, we multiply those, and then we get the total square footage, which is 952 square foot. So now we input that figure, 952, and then we hit the right arrow. Now we have to select the type of windows in this home. So we have a few choices here. We have single pane, double pane, double pane low E, and triple pane. And at the bottom it says, homes built in 1990 or later typically have low E windows. So you can actually look at your home's year and that will give you a good idea of what type of windows you may have. Let's go take a look at the windows. You can tell this house has been remodeled. We've got new flooring, new siding, and new windows. And these windows are double pane and they are low E. So now we're gonna select double pane, low E in the Laser Calc mobile app, and we're gonna click that right arrow. So now we're gonna to move to enter the total square footage for all the windows in the home. You can see at the bottom it says, if you prefer not to measure the windows, a good estimate is 10 to 25% of the total square footage of the home. A default value is provided based on the total square footage. I measured all the windows and the combined square footage was 130. The default figure that's in the box already is 140. So I'm pretty impressed because the default input is very accurate compared to the actual reading that I got. So I'm gonna actually use that 140 and then we are gonna go to the next step. Next step is construction type. And you can see that there are three choices, loose, average, and tight. Now, if this is a brand new home, I'm gonna choose tight. If this is a very, very old home, I'm gonna choose loose. If this home is older but has been remodeled, I'm gonna choose average. But you can see at the very bottom, there's a description. It says, loose construction means the home is drafty with lots of gaps. Selecting loose will result in notably higher calculated load. Tight construction is well sealed, which minimizes drafts, but requires more mechanical ventilation, common for new construction, Average construction is somewhere in between. For this home, it's been remodeled as an older home, but I'm gonna say this is an average construction type. Now we're moving forward and we're choosing the floor type. And when you pull down the arrow, you have a lot of different choices, right? We have carpet, raised floor, we have slab, we have wood, vinyl. And when I look down, we have wood vinyl for this home. So is there insulation underneath that wood floor? Is it no insulation, which would be R0, or is there R30? This is where you'd want to look in the crawl space, or you'd want to go in the basement and actually look underneath in the joist space to actually see if there's insulation. If it's just a raised uh, wood or vinyl floor, then we're going to choose R0. And that's what we have here. So we're going to choose raised floor R0, and we're gonna move forward. Moving on to wall type. You can see behind me, we're dealing with brick with this home. And you've got a how to choose on the screen for the app for the wall type, just like you had for the floor type. So if you click the how to choose, then there's a description of each choice. That way you know what that choice means, and you can better choose which wall type you're dealing with as far as your brick. So if we click the choices, we've got brick, we've got cement block wall, we've got stucco frame, we've got wood vinyl. And beside each one of those, we have an R value. And it's good to know if you have R11, if you have R13, R19. If you have an older home, you may have R11, R13. If you have a newer home, you may have R19, R30. A good way to tell what insulation you have inside your wall is to look at the size of the studs. Whether it's four inch, whether it's six inch, we can actually come up to a window and we can open it and then we can measure from the inside, outside, and then we can find out what our stud size is. Then you can ask your homeowner, have you remodeled the home? Do you know what insulation is in your walls? But typically, the older the home, the less R value. The newer the home, the better, the thicker the insulation, the bigger the R value. 
We've got brick, we have R13, we've got four inch studs for our walls. We're gonna select brick frame R13, and then we're gonna click next. So now we're gonna go to ceiling type. Now we're above the ceiling and we're gonna choose our ceiling type. You can see below your choices, you've got a section that says how to choose. If you click how to choose, you're gonna find that there's a description for each type of ceiling type. And that's very nice. You can see where it says R11 unvented or R11 vented. Since we're up here inside the attic, you can see at the very end, at the gable end wall, for each end of this attic area, we've got a vent. So it is vented. I'm pretty sure we've got a ridge vent as well. So that means that we will choose vented. And then we need to know our insulation type. We're gonna use our tape measure to figure out what the insulation value is. You can see where it says R11 vented. It says an R11 vented ceiling includes three and a half inches of insulation and has ventilation to allow airflow through the attic or roof. Now we're gonna use our tape measure. Now let's use our tape measure and let's measure, let's go to the very bottom. It looks like we've got about three and a half, maybe four inches of insulation. So I would say this is R11. Next, we're gonna enter the total amount of appliances we have in the home. Do we have a refrigerator? Do we have a dishwasher? Do we have a washer, a dryer, a stove? For this home, we're gonna put five appliances because that's the total. Then we're gonna click the right arrow button and we're gonna look at duct location. What's your location of your duct work? Is it in the crawl space, the basement? Is it in the attic or is it in a condition space? Condition meaning that area that the duct is located in is being heated and cooled. For this home, it's in the basement. So we're gonna click basement and then we're gonna hit that right arrow. Now we're gonna to go to enter how many people live inside this home. Since this home has three bedrooms, we can assume there are three people that live here. So we're gonna click three, and then we're gonna have our load calculation report. Make sure you know if your home has a basement, if it's being conditioned or not. For this home, the basement has no rooms and it's not being conditioned. So I did not include this basement as part of the load of the structure. But if this basement was outfitted with rooms and there were a bunch of dividers and there were a bunch of vents and it was being conditioned, then I would include this in the total home square footage. Now we've got a load calculation report. So we can take a look at that load calculation report for Mr. Billy Bob here at this property. It says the recommended cooling size for Mr. Billy Bob is three ton. The recommended heating output is 38,537 BTUs. Then we look down at the very bottom and it says our sensible cooling load, latent cooling load, adjusted unit load, total cooling load, and total heat load. And then it says at the very, very bottom, recommended cooling size is an estimate only. Equipment selection is the responsibility of the installing contractor and should be based on manufacturer equipment specifications and actual equipment performance. Now let's take a look at our unit size. You can see right here it says YC2E42S. So it's a 42,000 BTU a cooling unit. This right here is the outdoor unit and this is a split gas. So we've got a gas furnace inside and then we've got our cooling right here. This is a three and a half ton. So we're slightly oversized. So it'd probably be a good idea to maybe heat and cool some of that basement and add a couple vents. Let's take a look at our furnace and look at the heating capacity of the furnace. Here's our gas furnace right here. It's a 90% furnace. You can see that PVC vent. And if we look at this bottom panel, it says the model number is TM9Y080C16. So we see that 080, that is 80,000 BTUs. So the customer 
could have used a 60,000 BTU furnace instead of an 80, and that would have saved them some money on equipment cost and also on fuel cost operating this furnace each month. If you need to perform a heat load calculation, you've got a mobile phone, download the app Laser Calc Mobile. It's only $10 a month, and it's a pretty simple tool to use when you're on the go. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you learned something in today's video, let me know what you learned down in the comments. If you got a question, remember, questions can lead to new content. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This is HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.